All right, everyone, welcome to how to find off-market opportunities using AI. Now, for transparency, AI is clickbait. You should not be using AI in your real estate business, and I'm going to explain why. Here is one of the primary reasons. Uh, I follow the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, and just a few days ago, they put out a bulletin that says SEC files charges on investment advisors for making false and misleading statements about the use of artificial intelligence. Okay. Be very, very careful when somebody is promoting something with AI. Another thing that has recently come out, the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, in conjunction with the FCC, have come out and said that you cannot use voice AI, so conversational <laughs> AI with voice, that is illegal to cell phones and home phones. You can do it B2B. You cannot do it B2C. All right. There are some very, very, very small exceptions to that. I can guarantee you you're probably going to violate the rules even trying to use those very small exceptions. So AI is starting to get banned from our government left and right. Now, will that change if administrations change later? I don't know. Don't want to get into a political conversation. I just want to tell you right now, be very, very careful using AI. So AI in the context of what we're going to be doing today is called automation intelligence, not artificial intelligence. We don't want to be artificial. We want to be ourselves. And we're going to use automations to be able to free us up to do the things that we're good at, like having conversations with people. Right, Sean? All right. So what are we going to do today? First, we're going to talk about introductions to systems. Now, some of you may have seen me present this before. This is just a very brief introduction to understand why systems are important for any business. And make no mistake, if you are trying to invest in real estate, it is a business. Now, whether you have it as a side hustle right now or it is your full-time business, it is still a business. How to find owners willing to sell. We'll jump into that. Uh, and then from there, we are going to jump into Acquisition Pro, and I'm going to show you how to use Acquisition Pro to find opportunities in the next 90 days. Uh, then I'll present you with a strategic action plan and follow up with Q&A. For those of you that do not know who I am, and there's a few of you on here. I see a lot of new faces today. My name is David Monroe. I am a CCIM. For those that don't know what CCIM is, that is a Certified Commercial Investment Member. Uh, it is a designation, a real estate designation. It is the highest commercial real estate designation that you can get in the commercial real estate industry. It is about 68% brokers and the rest are lenders, developers, syndicators, uh, CPAs, attorneys, people like that. I am a multifamily investor and strategic consultant. I've been a CCI, I am a CCIM 102 market analysis instructor. There are 13,000 members in CCIM. There are only 60 instructors. So we are very, very few and they are very stringent on who they bring in as instructors, which makes me wonder every day why the heck I got chosen. I am on the tech board, uh, have been for the last five years. Uh, I am the VP this year. Actually, this is my sixth year on the tech board. No, fourth year on the tech board, sorry. Uh, and I'm the VP this year for 2024. I am the CCIM Education Committee Vice Chair, uh, which just means next year I will be the chair of the Education Committee, which is the second highest committee in the CCIM Institute. I am the Ward Center Immediate Past Chair, which is a subcommittee of the Education Committee, all this committee stuff. You guys are like, who cares? I'm a former syndicator and broker, so I don't broker anymore. Now passive investor when a deal makes sense. Haven't seen anything make sense in a long freaking time. I'm a former multifamily management company owner. So if I ever talk about property management, 
you might want to listen. I think I might know a thing or two about property management. And I am the founder of Acquisition Pro. So, that's you know, David, you, you should uh, you should replace the word former with recovering. Yeah, right. That's, that's exactly right, uh, uh, Sean. I, I really should. And I don't put it on my slide, but you can see from my shirt that I am also a former Marine. So uh, I've got this slide up, the Strategic Acquisition Workshop, just to show you that the workshop that I'm going to be starting next week, um, and you can either access it live or you can wait until it's uploaded to YouTube, um, but it is in three phases, acquisition, analysis, and operations, uh, and there are nine steps. In today's lesson, we are going to be talking about finding opportunities. Now, there is more in that step, and I will mention that later on, than just finding opportunities. Because if you look at this, you're probably scratching your head going, wait a minute, we're kind of missing underwriting. And yes, underwriting is under that second step. Uh, for right now, we're just talking about finding off-market opportunities. All right, so introduction to systems. So first-time small business owners have a success rate of 18%. Business owners who failed in the past have a slightly higher startup success rate of 20%. Business owners who started a successful startup in the past have a business success rate of around 30% when starting a new venture. So for anybody that is starting a new business or has started a new business, you kind of know what this feels like. For all of us, every one of us have been through this, unless you're one of the few that got it right the first time. Probably not many of us here, including myself. Most recently, uh, a group called Franit looked at 1,500 businesses that were franchised between 2006 and 2010 and were able to provide some insight into franchise success rates. Out of them, about 92% were still open after two years. 92% of franchises. What do franchises have that most don't? Systems. Out of them, uh, let's see, and 85% were in ap operation after five, so only a 15% fail rate. In contrast, Bureau of Labor Statistics reports about only 80% of independent businesses stay open after two years. So we're destined to fail. That's pretty much what we're saying if we don't have a system. Well, what did McDonald's and Starbucks and all these other franchise models that you've seen, what do they all have in common? And I said this already, systems. So without a system, you have about an 85% chance of failure. Like I said, we're destined for failure if we don't have a system. And a system doesn't have to be tech, but why not? Okay, so that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about systems. I just want you to understand that without a system, then you're destined for failure. So having a system helps you accelerate that success rate. Okay. And of course, there's going to be learning curves. The more we fail, the more we learn, we know that. So how do we find owners willing to sell? Well, first we need to look at who are the influencers in our market around us that can bring us opportunities. We don't ever want to not look at those influencers. My favorite influencer are appraisers. For those that know me, know the story of my very first multifamily opportunity. I had a friend that I build had been building a relationship that was an appraiser. And he came to me, it was, I don't remember, 2012, no, it was early 2013. He came to me and he said, hey, uh, I just got an order from a bank to do an appraisal on a 32-unit apartment complex on Old Shell. And he said, I know that property is not for sale, so maybe you want to reach out to the owner and see if something's going on. I'm thinking the lender's getting ready to foreclose. So I followed up on that. I reached out to the owner, got a hold of the owner, come to find out. Um, she was not doing very well. She was just about out of her savings. She was still making her payments, but the lender knew she was coming to the end of 
her savings and was starting to prepare the foreclosure process for when she stopped paying. So I was able to get that 32 unit opportunity that I ended up selling as a short sell that I negotiated with the lender and got them to forgive her for the deficiency amount uh, as long as she agreed to receive a 1099 for that amount. And all that became agreeable and ended up selling the property. Uh, sold the property for $665,000 and uh, a year and a half ago, so that owner, the doctor bought it, um, a year and a half ago, some people that we know, and I'm not going to say who they are, they purchased this same property for $2.6 million. I'm just going to leave it at that. Lenders are another great opportunity. Mortgage brokers, asset managers within the lending institutions. Mortgage brokers can get you introductions to these lenders. We're coming up on a time now where there's going to be a plethora of foreclosures for multifamily properties coming to the market. A lot of those won't go direct back to the market uh, as they go real estate owned. So having uh, relationships with lenders can really help. If you're a broker, you especially want to have these relationships with these lenders because the lenders can start reaching out to you and say, look, we really don't want to take these properties back, but these people aren't communicating with us. They're not paying their note. Maybe you can reach out to them and see if they're willing to sell. We may even be willing to negotiate some kind of short sell situation so that it's a win-win for everybody. So do not discount those lenders. Attorneys, probate, divorce, bankruptcy, those are the three biggest ones that you can get opportunities from attorneys. Now, it's not as easy to build relationships with attorneys as it is with appraisers and lenders because attorneys have a different mindset than a lot of us do. So you just have to break through that uh, facade that they have. CPAs are another great um, resource because they do investors' taxes. And they may see when uh, an investor might be in trouble. And if they know that you're someone in the market that can get somebody out of trouble, then they might reach out to you and say, hey, um, oh, wait a minute. Well, hold on. Let me see what I got going here. Uh, oh, Sean. Uh, and so they might reach out to you and say, I got this owner. Um Maybe you want to reach out to them and, and see if there's a win-win for everybody uh, in a transaction. Then, of course, we have syndicators and sponsors. Not every deal that you find you're going to want or even remotely want, especially if the seller's lost his mind or owner, maybe not a seller yet, but has a lofty expectation. Well, there are still syndicators out there that are overpaying for assets. So don't be afraid to put out something to those relationships and say, hey, I've got this off-market deal. The owners agreed to sell, but he wants this number. Uh, would you be interested? And you'd be surprised how many would say, heck yeah, I'm interested in that. No problem. Which is what's got us in this situation that we're going to be in in the first place. Real estate brokers. Now, I mentioned brokers a minute ago and spoke directly to you about building relationships with lenders. For the investors out there, build relationships with real estate brokers. When you're in an expansion market like we were, we're not there anymore, boutiques are the best because they really don't know what to do with what they have. They're pretty new or they haven't dealt with larger properties. Or if you're dealing with smaller properties, boutiques are really good to get in with. And they're hungrier. So they will talk to you more than they'll talk to, more than a global or a national firm will talk to you. So especially in an expansion market. Now, as things are turning, and some of you are probably seeing this, uh, you're probably noticing that a lot of the brokers are starting to answer their phones again. Huh, imagine that. So don't forget to build relationships with your brokers. Delroy, a boutique means... They're not part of a national firm. So I'm sure you've heard of Marcus and Millichap or SVN, Cushman and Wakefield, CBRE, all those big national brokerages. Uh, and other ones like on the residential side would be Remax, 
Keller Williams and, and those large national firms. A boutique would be David Monroe Realty or for me, Premier Apartment Services. That was what my firm was called for some time. So those are the boutique firms. Good, Roger that. Now, we're not here to get deals from brokers. We're here to get deals from owners. So that's a great segue into how do we find these owners? Well, let's first talk about primary sources. Somebody that's listening, unmute or put in chat because I'm monitoring chat. Give me a primary source for how you would find an owner. Owner contact Co information. CoStar, good. CoStar, Yardi, Reonomy, Prospect Now, Land Vision. These are all resources that you can go to to be able to find contact information for owners. CoStar being the largest database um, because they own apartments.com and recently have bought homes.com and just seem to be getting their hands into everything. The distressed sources, who knows what the two major distressed sources are for multifamily properties? Christine says, CoStar does have distress, but it's only CMBS. Tax is not really what I'm looking for, David. All right, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Uh, okay, but where can you find Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's data without going direct to them? I have no idea. Mike Castain's got it. TREP and Real Capital Analytics. Mike, you've seen this before, haven't you? No, because I've never presented that before. Uh, on your uh, strategic uh, acquisition uh, uh, method uh, workshop in ah. January, you did. Ah, Roger that. There Mike's you go. just a smart guy. I'm, Mike is no, a smart I'm, guy. I'm just reading my notes. <laughs> so, yes, TREP and Real Capital Analytics. These are uh, capital market data analytic firms that you can find out what loans are currently in trouble, whether they're serv uh, whether they're performing, non-performing, 30, 60, 90 day delinquent on the watch list or on the special servicing list. Those are all the different ways and you can search their databases and their databases have all loan types. They've got um, CMBS, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or agency. Uh, they also have CLOs, which are collateralized loan obligations or somebody tell me what a collateral uh, collateralized loan obligation is. Another word for them. Mortgage-backed security. What has every property been purchased with in the last three years? Oh, uh, bridge. bridge debt. Thank you, Mike. Bridge debt. Okay. That's a CLO. Collateralized loan obligation is bridge. Okay. In other words, it's a private entity that is providing capital to bridge between acquisition and uh, long-term financing. At least that's what it was originally designed for until bridge lost their minds and decided to start loaning for acquisition. Skip tracers and virtual assistants. These are another way to find owners. So you have online, online tools such as REI Skip, and there are others. REI Skip is just the one that I've used and um, am familiar with. There are others that you can look up to be able to get um, owner contact information via some type of skip trace method. Now I have compared REI skip to CoStar's data and CoStar uh, beat out REI skip pretty much hands down. So you can kind of take that for what that's worth. Uh, another one is hiring a VA and the best place to do that is via onlinejobs.ph. I've got a YouTube video on my YouTube channel at David Monroe CCIM that explains exactly how I hire VAs in the Philippines. And that's what the PH stands for is Philippines. So onlinejobs.ph is uh, Philippines uh, virtual assistants. And they are a great resource for skip tracing whatever data you may have. So if you don't trust the CoStar or Yardi or Reonomy or any of the other data that you collect, 
give it to them and they can skip trace that data for you, which it's probably better for them to do it than for you to do it because it's probably not the best use of your time. So continued online advertising. Now this has primarily been used in single family. It doesn't mean it can't be used in multifamily. Can everybody please mute their, uh, their uh, computers? Ooh, we got 50 now. There we go. Sorry about the slight delay there. Hold on one second. Good. Uh, so online advertising is primarily used in single family. You see it a lot with like wholesalers and uh, ones that are trying to do subject to, which is a whole nother issue. I'm not even going to talk about it. Um, but you can do it in uh, multifamily as well. You just have to be creative on how you do it. Uh, James says he found the world's best VA, uh, must be talking about in the Philippines or onlinejobs.ph, went through four to find her. Yeah, you're going to have to go through some to finally find one. All right, let me get the technology working again here. There we go. So these are Google AdWords, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, TikTok ads, Twitter ads, you name it. Everybody's got an ad network these days. Bing's got it. You, Yahoo's got it. Everybody's got an ad network, right? Um, I did a recent ad campaign uh, for um, a lead magnet that I had, which was an off-market um, email sequence. And I used Google AdWords because Facebook ads banned me three years ago and will not give me my account back. Um, and I actually had really good results for the first time. And believe it or not, I did exactly what the guru said not to do. I let Google do everything. So I let them write the ads. I let them write the headlines. Now I modified one, two, or three of them, added one or two, but I didn't have to do much at all. Best AI tool in the, tool in the world was just letting Google write my ads for me. Then it told me, put an image up because you can do images in display now. And so I did. And then it said, uh, put in some resource links. So when you've got your ad, underneath it will be other links. Now I made sure it didn't distract from that lead magnet that I had. So I put in two other links underneath there. You could put up to four and I did. And so everything Google kept telling me to do, I just did it. And I ended up getting 39 leads at $6 and 45 cents a lead. I've never paid $6 and 45 cents for a lead before. Normally, normally it's between $10 and $25, depending on what time of year it is upwards of $25 during Black Friday because it's very competitive and I've paid as little as $10, but I've never paid under $10 a lead. So moral to the story, maybe they know what they're talking about and it isn't that they're trying to just scratch a bunch of money from you. They want you to succeed because the more you get conversions and the more opportunities you have the more you're going to advertise with them and spend money with them. I'm, am I thinking wrong? Somebody tell me if I'm crazy. But all the gurus tell you, don't do what Google says. All they want your money. It's, it's actually not true. And I proved it. So anyway, enough on online advertising. That is another form that we can go out and find owners. Then we have online group communities. This is very powerful. Now, most of you have seen my multifamily investing strategies for beginners Facebook community. There are 4,500 people in that community. Now, I am providing multifamily education. I'm not trying to reach out to owners, but somebody tell me what kind of group you could build that would attract multifamily owners. An you either do it in chat or group. I'm sorry, go ahead. An asset management group. Uh -huh. Okay. What would you title it, Sean? Um, <clears throat> problem solving for apartment owners or something like that. Okay. I, that's a sucky name, but that's what popped into my head right now. Okay. Well, I see where you're going with that, but I would challenge your thinking. But, and I'll tell you why in a second. Anybody else? 
Yeah, just something around maybe energy efficiency or becoming a better owner of operations, something like that. No, I, I wouldn't. You you, you got to remember that people that own multifamily properties probably have a big ego already. So I don't, I don't know if I'd want to knock their ego down by telling them they need to become better at something. Mm -hmm. um, what if you just said group for multifamily owners? That's too, that's too simple. <laughs> it, it, it's too easy, right? Right, right, right. Keep now, it simple. You, That's perfect. <laughs> what would you say, Sean? I said, keep it simple. Now, it, what, what would you rather do if you're searching, if you're an owner, and you just want to be part of a community? That's all you want to do. You want to be part of a community of other multifamily owners. Would you go to the one on uh, how to be a better asset manager, or would you go to the one called Community for Multifamily Owners? The second. Of course. Or as Jim Rohn would say, of course. <laughs> okay. Guys, guys getting where I'm going here. So Facebook groups, you're going to want to build two of them. Now I've just recently learned this strategy and my mind went, Ding. how did I not learn this before? There's only one guy I know doing this and he's friggin' killing it. So you create one public group. Everything you've ever been taught on Facebook groups tells you, including me, tells you do a private group. Because if you do a private group, we can ask questions, we can uh, screen. And if we use uh, an automation tool, we can collect their contact information and bring them into our CRM. Even I've taught that. But there's a better way. You create a public group to build community. No branding. None. Zip, zilch, zero, no branding. Just to build a community. So you have some generic photo of maybe an apartment complex and um, you call it, and, and I would make it local in nature because you're not investing in every market in the country. So you can say multifamily uh, community for multifamily owners in Dallas or in Texas or North Carolina or Mobile, Alabama. Although I don't know if I'd be that small, but you get my point. That way it's a bit more targeted for what you're looking for in the markets that you're investing in. Does that make sense to everybody? Crickets. Did I lose you? Makes, makes total sense. Okay. So once you have, and now look, no, I don't want to say selling because we're not really selling in our industry, but for brokers, you're not asking for listings in this group. Uh, investors, you're not asking for capital in this group, or you're not asking them to sell in this group. But what you can do, and if you guys have ever heard of Alex Hormozzi, he has this philosophy of give, 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 ask. Meaning provide a ton of value and every once in a while have an ask. That ask still needs to be value, like this presentation. Is there a call to action at the end of this presentation? There will be. But you're getting nothing but value right now. So don't do one of those Russell Brunson perfect webinars where you're selling through the whole stupid thing. Provide tremendous value. And so when you provide something like that in your group, they can sign up. When they sign up, they go into your email list. Now you have control of them. You don't on Facebook or LinkedIn, but now you do. And you can invite them to your second group which is going to be called your VIP group. Now, it can be how to be a better asset manager, Sean. That absolutely can be your second group. So there's two philosophies here. You've got Russell Brunson that says, uh, you need to be selling from the moment, always sell, 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 sell. Who's, who's ever seen the movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross? 
You guys remember that movie? You can't tell me nobody here has seen the movie Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I saw it. Don't remember it, though. Oh, my goodness, people. That's one of the best real estate sales movies ever. Okay. Yeah, ABC. He knows where I'm going. That's right. So Alec Baldwin, who is the sales manager, is standing up on the whiteboard and he's chewing everybody's butt out. And he says, what do we do? Every single day, every person we talk to, ABC, always be closing, always be closing. That's one philosophy. The other philosophy is you do it like how Kermosi teaches it. And he says, you give in public, you sell in private. I want to let that sink in for a minute. Give in public, sell in private. So you have this public group where you're giving all this value. People are starting to like you. They're starting to know you. They're starting to trust you. You do this training that they have to opt in for. And now, now you have them privately. You've been give, give, given, and giving. And now you've got them privately. And now we can start asking for the opportunity. Does that make sense to everybody? Love it. Okay. I'm sure you guys have never heard this before. You probably have. It was just told a different way. Okay. So an example here for um, a post that you would have would be a register, opt-in, schedule appointment. You do those in the private group. You can do register for a free masterclass like this in the public group, but in the private group, they can register for an investment offering or for a listing or schedule an appointment with you. Those are where the call to actions go to be able to get to the goal of having the opportunity, doing the business with the prospect to be, make them a client. Okay. So that's Facebook. Now we can do the exact same thing on LinkedIn, but we only need one group on LinkedIn. Why is that? Does anybody know why we only need one group on LinkedIn? Because they only let you have one? No, you can have as many as you want. I just created a new LinkedIn profile. Because LinkedIn is a B2B um, business to business platform. People are expecting to be sold to on LinkedIn, where on Facebook, they're looking to build community. They're looking for interaction with other people, not necessarily to be sold to. So in LinkedIn, you can go direct. So now any post that you do in your free Facebook group or in your VIP Facebook group, all of those posts need to be added to your LinkedIn group. And your LinkedIn group should mirror those two groups. Now we have the opportunity to spread our message across two different platforms. If you're into doing video, you can do the same thing uh, with video on YouTube and in TikTok. It's just a little harder to do community. There are community tabs in YouTube. I don't think there is in TikTok. Um, haven't done enough in TikTok to know. But in YouTube, there is a community tab, um, but I have not seen a lot of interaction with those community tabs. So I don't know enough right now whether you could do this same strategy using that tab in YouTube, but you can take any video you do uh, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, or like this masterclass, which is going to go up on my YouTube channel by the end of the day. Um, you can use those things and put them up on your YouTube channel to add to this, all right? That way we are covering multiple channels to try to network with owners, okay? So you wanna mirror your public Facebook group as well as your VIP and you duplicate all posts, okay? Any questions on how we find owners? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you guys have never been given a social media strategy for finding owners. Anybody see, I haven't seen anything on the market for that. Anybody seen that anywhere, privately or publicly? 
No, not real estate related. It's always going through brokers. Yeah, right. So it's you talk. Yeah, I haven't either. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys because that's the first time I've presented that. All right. So now, now that we know that we can go to CoStar, and I'm just going to use CoStar as an example, that we can go to CoStar or we can go to a VA or um, we can uh, use a skip trace tool or build our network within these groups. Um, now we can take those contacts and we can use automation to follow up with them, to allow us to continue to have conversations with people because our best use of our time on a daily basis is holding conversations with people that want to talk to us, not cold calling or anything like that. We want to be able to talk to people that want to talk to us. I'm not telling you not to cold call. As a matter of fact, there's even a way to do it in Acquisition Pro. I'm just saying it's better if they've requested the conversation or they've started the conversation and Acquisition Pro does that. So let's take a look at that. So you can use systems and automations to build relationships with influencers, use the online tools to find owners directly, then use systems and automations in Acquisition Pro to find and win off-market opportunities, kind of like what I just said. So how do you use systems to find and win deals? We're going to go over this, and then I'm going to jump in and show you how it's done inside Acquisition Pro. So tools needed to build your system. There's a ton. You need a CRM. So who here currently has a CRM? And as a matter of fact, in the chat, do this. If you have a CRM right now, tell me what it is. For most of you, it's probably Active Campaign. Okay, I see HubSpot, HubSpot, Smart Syndicator, Good White L, Podio, Real Next, George, <laughs> Podio. Okay. All right. REI Reply, that's also on Go High Level. Okay. Good Ronald. Anyone else? <laughs> Andrew Acquisition Pro. There you go. Will Acquisition. See? I love you guys. Get Response Transitioning to Acquisition Pro. Good. Yeah, Get Response is another one. Okay. All right. All these CRMs. Okay. Do any of those CRMs have a built-in calendar? Not one you can connect to, one that's actually part of the tool. Okay. Sean says yes. For a couple of you, like REI Reply, I think you've got it with REI Reply. There was somebody else that was just high level. High level does as well. Obviously, Acquisition Pro is built on high level. Okay, so email client follow-up automations. Your CRMs should allow this. Uh, I saw Podio and Realnex. Now, I don't know. Podio, tell me, does Podio have um, automated follow-up automations? Or is it just... Um, uh, uh, broadcasts. Okay. Uh, did, did anyone, the two using Podio, does it have automated follow up message inside of it? I don't know a lot about Podio. Okay. Josh says Podio sucks. Well, Roger that. George, you already know what I'm going to tell you. Real Next does not have follow up automations. And I'm going to tell you guys, none of the commercial real estate tools out there, except HubSpot, which you're talking paying five, $600 a month to get the follow-up uh, automations and the commercial real estate uh, app in HubSpot. Uh, other than that, none of them have uh, follow-up automated email clients. None of the commercial real estate CRMs do. I've been working with Real Next for four years to get them to do it. I think they're close. I think we're getting close with them. SMS client, okay, also follow-up automations. Uh, if you have the ability to capture information and be able to SMS somebody, that is the most powerful part of any automation. And the reason is people don't really respond to email. They might respond 3 to 5% is probably a pretty good response rate for cold emails, uh, well, Sean, I'm about to talk about that. 
Um, so for cold emails, about three to 5%. When I mean cold, you, you pull a list from one of the primary sources, CoStar, Ari, uh, Reonomy, uh, Yardy Matrix, any of those, upload it. That's a cold list. Start sending them emails. You get about three to 5% response. With text messaging, it's about 40% response rate. So it's much, much different. Now, the rules have changed. As of September 1st, 2023, you cannot capital N November, capital O uh, Oscar, capital T Tango, not send cold SMS messages. You cannot do it. Don't do it. Like Sean just said, you will get banned. Okay. You must get permission to be able to SMS them. That is mandatory. And there's a new process you have to go through called A2P10 DLC, which I'm pretty doggone good at. I have to, I have to admit, I've had dozens of my clients inside Acquisition Pro get approved. First time. Uh, it took a while to figure out that process, but once I did, uh, it's been um, a pretty easy setup for me. Uh, let's see, Sean says, you even get permission enough. Well, uh, if enough people reply, stop. Yeah, that's right, Sean. But if you cold texted them, then um, you're going to get a bunch of those stops and yeah, you'll get banned. If they requested the information, you won't. So, um, and, and you may just be on a bad system. I don't know whose system you're on. Because I get about every opt-in, um, let's say for every 10 opt-ins, well, it'd have to be more for about, because I've got about a 3% stop rate, Twilio. That's who I use, Twilio. So you're probably on a, a GHL uh, platform, if I had to guess. Um, I get about a 3% opt-out rate for SMS. That's fine. That's good. No problem with that at all. So I'm not sure why you're getting more, but we can have that conversation if you want later. Anyway, the point is SMS is what you want to have. Now, there is a way to take the cold data that you upload into your system, your CRM, whatever you're using. Obviously, we're going to talk about Acquisition Pro today because I'm a little biased. It's my tool. Um, but you can take that cold list and you can get those owners to give you permission to SMS them. And I'm going to show you how to do that later on. You can have an auto dialer for the cold callers out here that lie and say they like to cold call. Yes, you are lying. Nobody likes to cold call. You can sit here and argue with me all you want. In the back of your mind, I'm telling you, you do not like it. Nobody likes to be told no. As humans, that hurts. It hurts emotionally. It does not hurt physically, but it does hurt emotionally. We don't like to be told no, so nobody likes cold calling. That doesn't mean you're not good at it. There are people that are good at it. Like Christine, smile and dial. You've got ways to get beyond it. But trust me, you don't like doing it. For those that do and are good at it, we also have an auto dialer inside Acquisition Pro. Now, if you don't have a system like Podio, I'm sure Podio doesn't have an auto dialer. Podio probably does not have an SMS client. I know Realnext doesn't have either. Um, you have to link to something else in order to be able to do these things. There are very, very, very few systems out there that allow all of this to occur together in an all-in-one tool. Pipeline tracking. Now, a lot of CRMs will just be that, CRMs. Recently, ActiveCampaign has added pipeline tracking to their software. I don't know how good it is, and I don't know what the upgrade price is to get it. But like with Podio uh, or HubSpot or um, uh, GetResponse, or active campaign or any of those, you're limited on the number of contacts per whatever subscription you're paying. So if you hit 2,500 contacts, you got to go to the next level. Even a couple of the other all-in-one tools like 
Kartra and Groove that have their own built-in automated email systems, they are also contact limited. <clears throat> and then calendar. Oh, and pipeline tracking, for those that don't know, that is a sales process. So from the moment you have a lead, start moving them through a pipeline, through a process, you, you reach you reach out, then you get uh, then you get uh, a response from the lead. Now they're a prospect. Now you're working towards that appointment. Uh, then at the uh, end of the appointment, where do we put them? Do we nurture them? Are they a warm lead? Are they a hot lead? Were you able to close on the opportunity? Um, did the lead unsubscribe at some point or are they not qualified? These are all stages of a pipeline. And with what I'm going to show you here in a minute, we can fully automate that entire process. And then calendar is another big one. So Calendly, how many of you currently are using Calendly? That was a question for you guys. See, I'll wait for a response. I don't care. I want people talking to me. Okay. Michael Hinton says, no, I am, I am. George says, no, yes, yes, nope. yes. Switching over. Okay. So Calendly is another one. It's another fragmented part. So you got a Podio, you got a CRM. Then maybe Twilio, you got an SMS client uh, and potentially an auto dialer. I don't know if Twilio actually has an auto dialer in it or not. Then maybe something else for pipeline tracking. And then uh, uh, woo, Calendly for your calendar. And then page builder. Now you got what? Click funnels or um, if you're on WordPress, uh, Optimize Press or Kartra or Groove or any of the other big page builders out there. So you have all this fragmented stuff everywhere or you can have a tool that has all of this. Now, there's a couple of tools that were mentioned on here that do have all of this. It just depends on what your subscription level is for who you have that with as to how much you have access to and whether they limit any of it or not, okay? But with Acquisition Pro, we can cover all of that. So we have all those components built in, tied together with automations. All right, so... What do you say we jump in before we go into here? Let's jump into Acquisition Pro. So let me go into here. So this is a dashboard on Acquisition Pro. Now this is just a template, so there's nothing in here. Okay, you can hear, see here the funnel, that's the pipeline. So you've got the pipeline, where they are, where they're going in the next step. You can select different pipelines to come in here. So this is a nice, clean dashboard to kind of show you what's going on. You can even follow your tasks, what actions you got going on, lead sources, Google uh, analytics. It'll even tie to Google um, ads, Facebook ads. There's Google ads and Facebook ads there. So you got a great dashboard. But let's say that we have a list of contacts that we want to upload. So I'm going to go here to all of my markets. Some of these are states. So you'll see state of some of the small states. These are all owner contacts that I have that I pulled between November and December of last year. So four to five months old. That's it. Okay. So we're going to go into Charleston and we're going to upload this contact. Now it's just owner name, uh, first name, last name, email, phone. That's all I'm going to upload. We don't need the rest of that stinking information about what properties they own because they probably own multiple properties. We can find that out as we start to have conversations with them. All we need to know initially to start reaching out to them is, is what is their name? What's their phone number? What is their email? Not everybody is going to have email addresses. Not everybody is going to have cell phones or some kind of VoIP system for doing SMS. Well, the system will check for those things before it ever sends out so you don't get blocked messages. But the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to upload. I'm going to go to contacts and we are going to upload. Of course, that was me. And I can drag and drop, which I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull this in here, a CSV file and hit next. Now, 
We've got first name, last name, email, what it looks like in the contact list, and we can map it. Now I happen to have done it so it maps perfectly so I don't have to change anything. I click next. Now I can change this and say Charleston MSA owners. And if I click this, I create a smart list. So now if I go to advanced, I want to track by, and I'm going to say phone number because there's more phone numbers than there is emails. I do want to update any existing and I want to add an update. I can give them a tag now if I want to, and I can send them to a workflow. There's no need to do either one of these. Hit submit. And now all those owners will be uploaded here. All right. So that's how easy it is to bring the information in. Now I'm going to come off of this page as quick as I can. So I don't see any of that contact information because then I got to blur it out when I put this up on YouTube because you can't show contact information on YouTube. It goes against their terms and conditions. So now what happens? Well, now that they're in, we can start to tag them. And you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to go to contacts here and I can say that it defaults to 20 per page. So I can say, all right, I want to take these 20 and 260 total records were uploaded and I can sort by email. I can sort by phone. So if I sort by email first, I want to clear, uh, let me refresh so I can clear it. And what I want to show you is how we can churn cold contacts into warm leads so that we can uh, SMS them. The ones that don't have emails, sorry, you're, you're not going to be able to do much. So I got 20 selected. Now I can add a tag. So I just go tag and then I just add a tag. So here I can say off market cold give it an action, this is just test, and I hit add. Now I don't wanna do that because it'll actually send these owners the email and I don't wanna do that. So that's how we can tag them. Now what happens is they get put into a workflow. So this is the off-market workflow cold right here. So they come in here and if we go into organization, here's how we got the lead. There's that tag off-market cold, we're gonna put them into A001. So it automatically moves them into the pipeline. I don't have to go create an opportunity for them. Moves them into new lead automation. And this is where our email sequences sit. Okay, here are all our email sequences. Now, before we start our email sequence, we want to give them something of value. So we're going to send them an email that says, hey, <clears throat> how would you like the opportunity to be able to determine what your property value is worth? right now using my quick value calculator. If you'd like that, click this link, give me your name, email, and phone number, and you'll be able to download it. And there's a video to show you how to use it, All right? So not everybody's going to click on this, but those that do, now you have a much greater chance of being able to contact them because now we're churning it from just email to email and SMS. So this is how you can take a cold list and churn them warm this fast. So this is the first email they receive is this one. You're just sending them a cold email that says, I've got this great resource for you. Now, the system will wait a week and then it'll say, if they did not fill out the form, we're gonna leave them right here. And now I have a nine week email sequence with some of the best emails you've probably seen for some of you. It's going to go right over your head and go, I don't know what the heck, heck any of that says. And that's okay because we're just trying to get them to respond to us. That's the goal of this initial campaign is to get them to respond so we can start to have a conversation with them. And if you've got one of these emails and you don't understand what it is, reach out to me. I'll help you. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Um, once they get through the entire nine weeks of emails, if they still haven't responded, we're going to send them to a nurture campaign, okay? And it updates it automatically. Now, if they did fill out the form, we're going to remove them from this workflow so it won't send them through these. It's going to remove the cold tag and it's going to remove them from the A001 opportunity. And it's going to put them automatically into the A003, which is now they've opted in. So for the majority of them, they'll stay in cold. 
<clears throat> for the ones that opt in, they're going to come over here to opt in. And now they're going to go through the exact same process, the exact same emails. The only difference is now we can send an SMS message with them. So first we want to ask, did you get your download? Hey, I sent you an email if you didn't. Okay. Then on the next one, we just start having a conversation with them, asking them questions to get them to respond. That's it. We just want to get them to respond. So now, did you find the download helpful? If not, how could we make it better for you? I'm not trying to sell them anything. I'm not asking how many properties they have for sale. I'm being conversational with them. And did you get your thing of value? Get them to respond. Hey, Sean, this may be a way for you to stop getting those stops that you're receiving. Okay, next SMS and the emails are the same in both. Uh, even with rising interest rates and declining rents, we're still in position to purchase. So now a call to action. Do you currently have anything you're ready or willing to sell? Okay, this one could potentially get a stop, uh, but maybe it won't. Maybe they'll just ignore it or maybe they do have something and they want to hear what you have to say and say, well, all right, well, what are you thinking or, or something? But now you're having a conversation over text message or email if they respond via email, okay? So that's how the automations work. And as you get an appointment, so they uh, they responded. So now they're in responded confirmed. Now you're having that conversation via email or via text. So now the goal switches. Now that we've got them to respond, we want to have an appointment with them, okay? So no matter whether we're trying to uh, find an off-market deal whether we're trying to list a property for a broker or trying to raise capital for an investor, whatever that is, we want to schedule that appointment so that we can have a 30 to 45 minute conversation with them. So once they schedule the appointment via the links that are built into each one of these work or into this workflow, then they automatically get moved to booked appointment. If they don't show or cancel, they move back. What's really cool about booked appointment in the system is you can keep it automated by a, uh, an email that you're going to get. So if I go to booked appointment and I come, you know, for all of you, you all received um, reminders, okay? There's a one-day reminder or a 24-hour reminder. Then there's, we're meeting today, and then there's a one-hour reminder, right? Well, what a lot of people don't do is I've got a 10-minute after. So this 10 minute after, whoops, wrong thing, is an internal notification that can be sent by SMS or email that says, and it's to me or to you, if you're the owner of the system, it says, uh, update appointment status for this contact, okay? And there's the contact name and there's the link to update the appointment status. So if you're on your phone, you click the link and now it says, what was the appointment status? So here are your choices. You can either do, uh, showed nurture, showed warm, showed, showed hot, uh, one business, uh, did not show, um, not qualified. Those are your choices. Whatever it is you select, it will automatically move that prospect to that part of the pipeline. You don't have to touch anything. So if you go somewhere to meet somebody person to person, you can still automate this by receiving that text, hitting that link, doing that appointment status, everything's done for you, okay? Sitting at your computer on Zoom, you get off the Zoom meeting, there's the email waiting for you, same process. So everything stays fully automated through the whole system. Now, if you want to make calls, that's what attempt to contact is. So while you're SMSing or just emailing, if you don't have the permission to SMS, just because you can't SMS them, you can still call them. So the attempt to contact is the auto dialer. So what we do is we just set up a uh, manual call for as many times as you want to do it. I recommend seven. There's only three here, but I would recommend at least seven times. So how does this work? Well, what happens is from conversations, you go up to manual actions and for everybody that is in that workflow, either 001 or 002, they will be sitting right here waiting for that call. You've got your call button up right here. 
And because we're in manual actions, if you had a bunch of people here, we would select the workflow, assign the person that, that those people belong to, and then hit let's go. When you hit let's go, it automatically dials the number of the first one here. So now you're doing your outreach. At the end of the call, when you hang up, three things, a pop-up comes up, asks you three things. Was the call completed, meaning you had a conversation? Was it a voicemail or did you not answer or did they not answer? If it's a did not answer or voicemail, they go down to the bottom of this list. Let's say there's 50 people on this list. They go from number one down to number 50. So you never miss a follow-up. When you're done with the other 49, now you start your follow-ups. Okay. And you can do that up to seven times. If you don't want to talk to that person that same day, then when we set that automation up, you just put your wait time in between those calls at least one day so that you don't call them on the same day, all right? So that's how we do the auto dialer. And then when you're done dialing, as soon as you hang up, do your form right there on your screen. It'll auto dial the next person unless you hit stop. And if you hit stop, then you can go do what you gotta do uh, if you're at the end of your call block, gotta go to the bathroom, eat lunch, whatever, all right? So that's how that is automated. So everything in here is automated. Now, if we go to sites, you'll notice that there is an owner lead funnel. So that link that they clicked on in that first email, here it is right here, already built out to give their name, email, and phone number, hit uh, download um, the quick value calculator, and then there's the landing page for them to download and the video on how to use it, all right? So this is all pre-built in. When they fill out this form is when they get moved from the cold list to the opt-in list. And it's all connected and it's all fully automated, all right? And there's calendars for each one of these. So if you're in the cold, uh, if you're in the cold list, then you use the cold calendar. If they're in the opt-in list, you use the opt-in calendar so it all stays within these workflows and these calendars are all connected. And if you have Google, they all integrate with one Google calendar and uh, you can use that one calendar for all four and they won't conflict with each other. So everything is here, okay? Any questions about the tool itself, Acquisition Pro, uh, or those automation processes. I know that was like a fastest demo on the planet and lost eight people in the process because of it, but that's okay. Hey, Dave, I have a good question. Go ahead, Jonathan. It better be good. You said it's good, so you've uh, set the bar high. <laughs> the quick value calculator, is that part of um, Acquisition Pro or is that something outside of it? It depends on how you get access to Acquisition Pro. Okay. 99% chance, yes, it's part of it. Gotcha. Okay. I give, it's called white label access. Well, no, sorry. It's called resale rights. You know, although you're not selling it, you're, you're mm -hmm. giving it away. I don't let you modify it, but uh, I give it to you to be able to give to whoever you want to build your list. I'm trying to remove all the roadblocks because- mm -hmm. Everybody does, nobody wants to build a landing page or do they know how to. Nobody wants to manage a CRM. Nobody wants to build out a calendar. Nobody wants to build all these automations out and manage these automations. Nobody wants to do all this stuff or even learn how to do it because you're real estate investors or brokers or capital raisers or asset managers or whatever it is you do, okay? Well, Josh says that's the overwhelming part, right? So I'm removing all of those roadblocks, okay? So finding and winning opportunities, we got to have an automated email follow-up campaign. I just showed that to you, the nine-week automated follow-up sequence. Now, we didn't go into each and every single email, um, but if you guys have downloaded the off-market email sequence that I have on my davidmonroeccim.com website, that's the same email sequence, just uploaded already into the tool. And it's already built into Acquisition Pro. Automate, we didn't talk about ringless voicemail campaign. 
You can also do ringless voicemail, which means you and you can do this in conjunction with the uh, email sequence. So it sends out the first email and give them the opportunity to opt in. They don't opt in. Week later, we send the first official email of the campaign. And at the same time, you can do a ringless voicemail where it won't ring their phone or sometimes it'll ring like once and then it won't ring again. And you leave a voicemail to be able to give another touch point. The more touch points we have, the better opportunity you have of somebody responding. Okay, also built into Acquisition Pro. Then we have the automated SMS follow-up campaign, which I showed you guys. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, Christine. We'll talk soon. And of course, the SMS is only five weeks because you don't want to overdo SMS. Okay, that's how you can get those stops. You don't want the stops. <laughs> like Sean said, you get too many stops. Twilio will say, oop, doop, mm -mm. we need to figure out why you're getting too many stops. Something you're sending is not connecting to your audience. So we're going to stop you for a little bit. They'll give you the opportunity to go again after you fix whatever it is they feel is broken. And of course, already built into Acquisition Pro. So with your calendar, your pipeline inside Acquisition Pro tied to the CRM and automated follow-up campaigns, all you have to do is hold appointments and win deals. That's it. That's all you got to do. So let's talk about the strategic action plan. Build relationships with influencers. Okay, we talked about those in the very early stages. That's your appraisers, your bankers, your mortgage brokers. Um, Veritas, you can do direct mail. This, this can be done in conjunction with direct mail. Um, I'm not a fan of direct mail. It has never worked for me. And it could be that my message just didn't connect to the owners that I was reaching out to. Um, but I've never had success in the 13 years I've been in this business and multifamily. It's never worked. So I stopped spending money on it. But you absolutely can do it. This doesn't replace it. You can do it in conjunction with it. Um, there is an app inside Acquisition Pro. It would be extra where you can uh, integrate with a direct mail resource if you wanted to do that. Find owners' uh, contact information. So now we're going to those primary sources or uh, we can skip trace or we can build our community groups to get uh, owner contact information. Then use Acquisition Pro to automate our system. So this is a uh, finding the owners, that's lead generation. Your community groups, that's lead generation. Acquisition Pro is lead conversion. Now we're converting that lead that we've put into Acquisition Pro into somebody that's going to do business with us. So for most of you, building and maintaining a system is not what you're good at. So what if I built and maintained it for you? How powerful would that be? Customize to your business needs, uh, to your business needs and goals. So all you have to do is hold conversations with people that want to hear what you have to offer. You don't need to learn a new tool or how to set it up. So consider that roadblock done. I'm going to do it for you. We're going to do it together, but I'm pretty much going to do all the work. There are some things that I have to converse with you in order to be able to build it. You don't need to keep paying for all the different tools you currently subscribe to. No more click funnels, Kartra or Groove. No more active campaign, MailChimp, AWeber, Constant Contact or GetResponse. No more Calendly, HoopSuite, HubSpot, or whatever ser uh, current CRM that you're using for right now. So say goodbye to all those tools, all the different subscription fees and tech support or lack thereof, because we know that a lot of these tools, their tech support leaves a little bit to be desired. And with all the custom build automations created and working for you, so you don't have to build them yourself. So introducing the strategic acquisition system. The only done-for-you, all-in-one solution for real estate professionals. The strategic acquisition system includes 12 months free access to Acquisition Pro, a complete done-for-you system by me, not by a VA, not by some student coach, by me, completely customized to your business. 
weekly group coaching and mentoring on marketing, lead generation, and lead conversion strategies. I think I proved to you over the uh, length of this call that I may know what I'm talking about on marketing, lead generation, and lead conversion. Initial one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings to get you customized and set up. Then one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings when you need help beyond normal communication cha uh, channels. Include your team on these calls, including a VA for training or another team member for training. This is a team sport. So you do not have to pay for every single team member. Okay, one subscription fee, that's it. Did I mention unlimited team members inside Acquisition Pro? And you're gonna get unlimited contacts, unlimited email sends, unlimited SMS messages, unlimited inbound and outbound calls, and once again, unlimited team members. And I pay for all the usage fees. So our phone system is Twilio and our email system is Mailgun. I get charged for every email sent and received. I get charged for every SMS sent and received. I get charged for every phone call uh, made and received. So you don't have to pay for any of those. I cover all those costs, including the $25 fee that it costs to get you A2P certified so that you can do SMS campaigns. You get lifetime access to the strategic partnering community. There are currently 293 members and starting next week on Thursday, March 28th at 1 p.m. East, I'm going to be holding weekly live sessions to update what used to be called the strategic partnering workshop, now renamed the strategic acquisition workshop. So it includes using Acquisition Pro uh, with all the automations. So the workshop will be held over the next six months and last about two hours per session. It's a monster. It took me six months to do it last time. Um, so I'm anticipating about six months this time. So if we look back at that initial slide that we saw early in the presentation, this is the workshop. We start by beginning at the end, clearly defining your goals and getting you set up so that you have an LLC. Hey, people ask all the time, when do I set up my entity? Well, you need to set up as quickly as possible because in order to send emails and SMSs, you gotta have a business now. Google and Yahoo no longer accept marketing messages from a free email account. You must have a business email. So we set all of this up in uh, part one. In part two or step two, step one, step two, we're finding opportunities like we covered today, but we also are going to learn how to underwrite. So underwriting and finding off-market opportunities is in step two, negotiations and uh, alternative acquisition strategies are in step three, things like wholesaling subject to um, master lease option, things like that, and the legal way to subject to, not the way you're taught uh, online. Then we go into phase two, we have due diligence, where I teach you the strategic analysis um, method that we teach at CCIM. Uh, then property management, remember, I used to own a property management company, I may know a thing or two about it, where we're gonna cover um, how to operate a property and primarily the most important thing is preventative maintenance. Then we'll talk about the capital stack, how to get a loan, how to raise capital, if that is raising capital is something you're wanting to do, although it's becoming more and more dangerous to try to tackle that, but I'm not here to tell anybody what their risk is. So I will still cover how to do it. Then move into phase three, which is asset management, then project management, which is your value add strategy, your business plan, and then how to exit the deal when you're done. So it's going to take about six months to cover all of this. Each one of these will have multiple sessions so it's nine modules. We're probably talking 50 plus total hours of content. So you'll get to watch that live as part of this. Or if you don't become part of the strategic acquisition system, you'll still be able to get the uh, workshop, but you'll have to wait until it's uploaded to YouTube. You're also, you can also include your business partners for free uh, to the strategic partnering community. Every Monday, we have a weekly Zoom meeting on mindset and motivation at One East. Every Tuesday, we have a weekly Zoom meeting to answer any questions about technology. I call it Tech Tuesday. 
Every Wednesday, we have a weekly Zoom meeting to answer any questions about anything uh, at 8 East. That's weekly Q&A. Every Thursday, we have the weekly group coaching on marketing, lead generation, and lead conversion strategies. That will be at 11 a.m. East because at 1 p.m. East, we will be updating the strategic acquisition workshop. Then every Friday, we have a weekly Zoom meeting on the state of the market. What's, what's inflation doing? What are interest rates doing? What's happening in the multifamily world? That happens every Friday at 1 East. And every Saturday, a friend of mine, Charles Seaman, holds his weekly Zoom meeting on underwriting. So he has an underwriting workshop. He does that at 4 East. So that's seven weekly live sessions, including the update to the strategic acquisition workshop, which you will not get anywhere else. I can promise you that. So I've removed the fear of building technology. I've removed the fear of marketing. No more fragmented subscriptions with the other tools you have no idea how to use, yet the gurus say you must have them to be successful. Everything you need to be successful is included and all built by me inside Acquisition Pro. So also built into the tool is access to all of my multifamily education, resources, and community. Although you can go to YouTube to get all the education. I had a epiphany earlier uh, or later in the year last year and said, I'm just going to start giving all the education away. <clears throat> so you literally never need to leave Acquisition Pro for all your multifamily needs. So for the attendees of this masterclass only, and uh, to answer, uh, is that Remy? Yes, this could be used for any asset class. So for the attendees of this masterclass only, you're going to get the strategic acquisition system and everything I've discussed so far, including access to me. And no, it's not $25,000, $60,000 like the stupid gurus will do. <clears throat> it's only $4,997 or $497 a month, okay? Either one. And you can add as many team members as you want. And if you make the decision to invest in your business today as a bonus, I'll knock off $1,000 of the 4997. Just use this coupon code and you'll have it here in a second. Don't worry about it. Or $100 off a month for the monthly investment. So for today only, get everything mentioned for $39.97 or $3.97 a month. So I'm going to put those links in the chat. Just give me a second here to get those in there with the coupon codes for those that want to get started right away. At midnight tonight, the cost for the strategic acquisition system will go up to $4,997 or $497 a month. So you can get $1,000 off the one time or $100 off the $497, and that's every month if you act by midnight tonight. This initial promotion of the strategic acquisition system will end on Wednesday at midnight. Because I'm doing all the work and I will never, ever use student coaches in my community, so I'm literally doing everything. Building your custom strategic acquisition system and holding all the live weekly sessions except for Saturday, I only have enough room for 10 people in the strategic acquisition system, right? So I only got 10 spots open. And there's an unconditional, no question to ask, 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, I'd be uh, obtuse if I did not offer it. So there's literally zero risk. There are people that will tell you, we are not offering a money-back guarantee. Well, I guarantee you that if you complain to the Federal Trade Commission, you're getting your money back. So let's recap. 12 months access to the strategic acquisition systems worth $5,000. 12 months to Acquisition Pro worth 1764. Lifetime access to all my education worth $5,000, although it's now free up on YouTube, but when I used to sell it, that's what it was worth. Lifetime access to all the multifamily resources, that's $10,000. Lifetime access to the strategic partnering community, that's $10,000. 12 months access to personal coaching and mentoring, that's $10,000. Lifetime access to the weekly meetings, $5,000. And unlimited team members, well, that one's priceless because nobody offers that. Okay, that's $46,746 in value for only $39.97 or $3.97 a month if you invest today and you have the coupon codes in the chat. Or you can wait until Wednesday and it'll be $49.97 or $4.97 a month. But only for the first 10 people that invest in the strategic acquisition system. Then this offer expires 
at this ridiculously low investment for what you are getting. That allows you to automate automatically run your real estate business so you can do what you do best. Hold conversations with people that want to talk to you. Okay? So you have the links in the chat if you want to be part of this. Love to have you. I've only got room for 10 and you've only got until midnight tonight to get the discounts. Okay?